Today on The Q Agenda. The Marshall siblings stopped by to talk about serving our country as LGBTQ people under the Trump administration. Also, comedian and host of The Zoo on LA TV, Nikki Paris is stopping by. We've got all that and more right here, right now on The, the Q, Q Agenda. Agenda. A pair of reports courtesy of the Trevor Project shine a light on the importance of a supportive adult voice in the lives of LGBTQ youth. Studies say just having at least one accepting adult in their lives reduced the chance of a suicide attempt uh, by LGBTQ youth by 40%. So today's question is, where did you find your strength coming to terms with your sexuality? And if you had that support, would you have taken it? Hmm. Guys, I don't know because I remember as a kid, if somebody even opened the conversation about being gay, I always thought they're trying to like, they're testing me. I, I don't know, I had that little voice in my head. What about you guys? Um, I don't know for me, cause this conversation is always so different for me because I always had so much support, like especially from my family and adults around me. Mm -hmm. So I don't, I couldn't really relate to kind of like the, stories of being like shunned out of the family or anything. So, but I think also that comes from maybe growing up a little bit like more in this generation as opposed to when times were a little bit more conservative. I in guess. the Old Testament. I know, I, I, try, I try not to make it about that. Like, I feel like what's, what's so imperative for LGBTQ youth is that we are affirmed at the right moments in our lives where we need it. And it sounds like your family unit really uh, came around and supported you as soon as they might have suspected that you were showing signs or whatever that means of being gay, that they yeah. wanted you to know there's all kinds of people in the world and affirmed you all along. Yeah. Now I came from a Southern Baptist family, so my dad's mm -hmm. a minister. And I remember having to tell my pediatrician the news that I was gay, I wasn't out to anybody else. Mm -hmm. um, and I said to her, you know, with a sad face, long face, I said, I I'm gay. And um, she brightened up her face with a smile and she said, me too. Oh, that's awesome. And I went, what? You don't look gay. Because she had like long hair and she just winds up her fist and punches me in the shoulder. And I was like, okay, now you look gay. <laughs> and, and I just, if that moment hadn't have been a moment of affirmation for me, how differently my life could have gone. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it's imperative to not only have adult figures who care, but who affirm us in those life-changing moments. Well, I think that one of the, the biggest things about being part of the community and being gay is your self-confidence. Mm -hmm. And it, it really, varies depending on how your loved ones respond when you're a kid to finding out that you're gay. Now in this particular subject we're talking about suicide and how it affects kids you know to to you know how to deal with you know wanting to kill themselves. Mm -hmm. Did you ever want to kill yourselves? I, I I had suicidal thoughts. Oh. I'm to a point where I just you guys as I was sharing with you guys to a point. One time I jumped out of a car on a freeway and I crazy stuff. I was being a brat but I was kind of like rebelling against being gay and 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 the consequences of mm -hmm. it. Um, mm -hmm. maybe if I would have had somebody who would have helped me a little bit better and I don't want to put it like I, I want to take responsibility for my actions. Mm -hmm. But maybe if I would have had somebody to talk to, I would have reacted differently. So how much of that, like, because we were talking before the cameras came on about what mm -hmm. happened, um, which is very brave of you to share that, that you had jumped out of a car because it was your first relationship and you didn't realize, not to put your business out there, but to, no, that you didn't no. realize that, um, how, maybe almost how to handle that, the relationship dynamic. So how much of that would have been um, sort of relieved if you had had Affirm affirmative gay couples maybe during that time period to look up to to show us how to be in relationships? Well and at least I think like that we're at least having this conversation mm -hmm. and the studies are out there so mm -hmm. the resources yeah. are out there and I want to invite everybody to please visit the Trevor Project page yeah. and if you're ever thinking about committing suicide you're not alone and there are resources out there for you. Well, I know what we can all agree on is how one supportive influence at the right and pivotal moment can change an LGBTQ youth's entire outlook on life. But when we come back, they are siblings who have served our country during the current administration, and they are both black and gay. We're gonna talk about the intersections of all of this when we are right back with Dante and Cherie Marshall. Welcome back to the Q Agenda. Our next guests are siblings, both members of the LGBT community and the black community, 
and have both served our country and continue to serve in different ways, one as an LAPD police officer and one who served in the armed forces. Please welcome Dante and Cherie Marshall. Yay! Yes. Welcome, guys. Welcome. Thank, thank you for coming. Yes, thanks thank for, you for coming. having us. Yeah, I think a really great place to start might be where you got your love for service from and where this sort of came as siblings and your family. I wondered, was it modeled for you or? <laughs> Uh, not really modeled. Um, for me personally, I kind of just fell into it. Um, I started out working with juveniles and kind of from then wanting them to just be structured so they didn't end up in the system and then just ended up going from juveniles to grown up men and then out in here to the streets. Wow. So. Yeah. And for you, right? Dante? Um, for me, it also just sort of happened. Um, I was looking at a few different schools uh, with academics and sports and the Naval Academy uh, was really they were after me uh, pretty strong. So, um, and my parents lit up when they reached out to me. So that, that became my path. And then, uh, yeah, it just, it, re, it, it ignited my love for people when I joined the service. So that's what, that's what kept me going into it. Well, let's jump into this because I am so excited about this conversation. Sure. Um, you both have served this country, are still serving this country. Yes. And uh, Trump comes along. <laughs> and it's, you know, there's a lot in there because he's definitely supported the police department. Uh, but you're members of the community. You're both uh, part of the LGBTQ community. And then there's the problems with, you know, like trans in the military. Then with, you know, HIV positive uh, members of the military also that they've tried to remove from service. So how does that all play in inside when you're in the inside of what's happening? With the police department, yes, they do support because Trump is very pro, pro police, pro blue, pro everything. Um, to me personally, it hasn't had an effect um, only because I try to keep my politics life away from my professional life. So anytime anybody wants to talk about it, I kind of just like, okay, yeah, you can have your opinion. That's fine. I'm not going to chime in on it. So. And do you have, do you experience that a lot? A lot of officers around you expressing opinions that are different, different might not necessarily be your own. And, and do you have to deal with that? Every oh yes. Day? Oh yes. Every day. And mm -hmm. it's, 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 it's a struggle, but you learn how to deal just yeah. like with anything in our, in our lives. We learn how to hide things. We learn how to push things aside and just take it with a grain of salt. Yeah. And I yeah. think like Enrique hit on the fact that the LGBTQ things, which I'd love to talk more about too, mm -hmm. how that influences your time in the military or as a police officer. But I also think that it's important that we talk about your blackness and how that influences every day, how you are, what you're bringing to the table as a part of your heart and soul and how you're having to, as a POC, people of color, having to sort of um, do the emotional heavyweight every day of being around people with different opinions and maybe stuff that might seem racist, obviously, but maybe not to them. And, and that, do you feel like you being a black woman as a police officer also allows you to mitigate those conversations? Um, yes and no. I do, as I'm walking the streets, I do get the, the F the police and you're mm. only arresting me because I'm black. And I'm like, yeah. am I not the same yeah. color as you? Yeah. <laughs> like, you yeah. can't use that black card against me because mm -hmm. you messed up, and uh -huh. that's why I'm here. Like, we don't just racially profile people. We're here for a reason. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's interesting that people still come at you, even though they see your skin color, they still come at you with that same type of... Um, propaganda that they use back in the day and it's like it doesn't work with me. Yeah, mm -hmm. well with the distrust between the communities, yeah. right, that exists, do you yeah. find yourselves do you find yourself in the middle of that and how how often? Absolutely. Um absolutely because I do have to arrest people and put handcuffs on people. Um I do find myself in situations more so to talk and educate than to just say, hey, this is what's happening, this is why it's happening. Mm -hmm. Where back in the day, they were just getting beat up and thrown into cars and stuff like that, yeah. and things weren't really being explained. So mm -hmm. there is a disconnect, but I take my opportunity to, with my contacts to actually educate and let them know, like, hey, if you don't want to talk to us, do what you're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. As long as you go along with the program, things are going to go fine. Nothing's going to happen to you that shouldn't happen to you. And you find they trust you more because yes. you look, because yes. you're, yeah. I usually don't have to chase after people because they, they see me. They're <laughs> like, okay, uh, I'm good. Uh, okay. Have you also felt like there's been like a drastic change since the current administration with how you have to deal with people? Yes, yes. You have to be more politically correct. You have to be, because a lot of people get, am I allowed to say butt hurt? They get butt hurt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Very easily. Um, 
So yes, you do have to change your demeanor. You do have to change the way you approach people, the way you talk to people. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's so much more. Yeah, we got to get in like, more. No, no, no. We, there's so much more to talk about. <laughs> and don't go anywhere because this is only going to get better. We'll be right back with more from Dante and Shuri. And we're back with more from Dante and Shuri. So, Dante, it's my understanding that you were in the military, but you got out for at a very specific moment, for a very specific time. Can, can you talk more about that? Yeah, well, um, you know, going back to the whole sexuality thing with, with our job, um, for me, sexuality always had to be a separate part of my job. Um, I served uh, before Don't Ask, Don't Tell was uh, abolished, so... Um, I mean, every waking moment of my, my existence was trying to hide who I was and keeping that from everybody. Um, and for the most part, the payoff was there, but um, I got out of active duty and I was reservist and I was going down to San Diego once a month. But once Trump got elected, that was, that was the end all be all for me. I just couldn't uh, see myself being a young black man, now knowing what I know about the country, now having uh, more awareness as to what's going on around me uh, with sexuality, hate crimes, race crimes, and having a man who represents a large part of the negative uh, feelings that are being you know, passed around this country and even bleeding into other parts of the world, have him being the last person in my chain of command, mm -hmm. the commander in chief, was just, it was just far too much. See, I, I relate to you in a certain way because um, in the case of Trump, he's done, I'm originally from Venezuela, and what he's done for my country has been so fantastic. He's finally penalized and put all these sanctions into the corrupt government, and really for the first time the United States has been actively involved into taking care of the corruption over there and punishing these people that have like they've drained my country. People are starving. They don't have toilet paper. You read it on the news every day. And then there's my LGBTQ part and when I have to look at my husband. And then you hear about everything he's doing about, you know, cutting the studies for, you know, the HIV research and then, uh, you know, the problem, the, taking the transgender troops away and, and you know, dismissing them. Uh, or, again, the HIV positive uh, people in the army that are being removed, like they want to remove them because they say that they're not qualified to serve, even though that they're under treatment and their uh, their HIV is controlled. So they they there's medic, you know, nowadays with medicine you can treat it and and just have a, a perfectly normal life. I cannot imagine what it is like to have the love for your country and then also feel in between the sword and the wall regarding to your sexuality and who you love, the people that you love. It's really hard. It's even hard um, when, I, when I think about talking about it because I feel like I have to honor two separate entities. Mm -hmm. You know, I really love the fact that I serve my country and I love my sailors. I still keep in touch with my old sailors. I would never change uh, that experience, that part of my life. But, you know, as, as a young, you know, woke African-American man, the two are just, they can't go, they can't go together. I can't just blatantly say that my last 10 or 12 years has been, has been great, you know. Um, there's, there's, a, there's a saying that we had to learn at the Naval Academy, and it's the qualifications of a Naval officer. And it, you know, I'll paraphrase, but it, it starts out by saying, you know, it is by no means enough that an officer of the Navy be a capable mariner. He has to be much more. And I apply that to the Office of the, the, office of the Presidency. It's easy to look at, he's done a lot of great things for our country and he's done a lot of great things um, systematically, but it's not enough. Like, the, we're talking about the office of the presidency. It's not enough to just do one or two or three great things. Correct. You have to be a shining example for everyone who's coming up, you know, representing the red, white, and blue. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I grew up, well, I served under Obama. Like, <laughs> come on. Yes. That's... <laughs> That's still an example of, of how to live your life. And, and I still look up to that family, and it's just, it's really hard to, to be proud of serving your country when you have a current president who's in office who represents what he represents now. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I feel like a lot of people who, who currently serve are, are torn between those two. It's like mm -hmm. service to country mm -hmm. and <laughs> alignment with, you know, 
some some pretty wild practices. Of course, well, and um, I, I also, Sherry, uh, how do we learn more about the police department and get closer and actually just have a healthy relationship? Go out and talk to us. Come out and talk to us. Do you see us? Come up and talk to us. We're people too. We'll, we'll answer your questions. We'll have whatever conversation you want to have. Just come out and talk. You know what I find interesting is that we brought, you brought up being a woke African-American man in this country, and you have a police officer for a sister. Do you guys ever have <laughs> conversations, real conversations with each other about what that, how those two things oh, clash? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> like, um, well, she was my roommate while she was going through LAPD Academy. Oh, wow. And for me, it was a very pivotal moment because this is the whole time when, you know, everybody's anti-police. Mm -hmm. But her being my sister made it so challenging. I was like, wait a second, I can't just blatantly say F the police. Like, my love is, mm -hmm. is a police officer. Mm -hmm. And it made, it forced me to really look at both sides of the coin mm -hmm. and be like, all right. So we have a systematic problem. Um, but we also have people who are dedicated to doing the great work to solve that problem. And that's one of the, one of the I mean, there's so many reasons why I'm so proud of this young woman right here. But one of, the, one of the most important things for her being who she is and doing what she's doing is that she brings that, that love to her job. She brings that base of familiarity. You know, we were raised in... PA, so. and, and love, 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 love. At the end of the day, that's what it love. is it all about. Out, yeah. And there's plenty of love here. And it's so beautiful. Thank you guys so much Absolutely. for coming. I mean, we want to thank Danta and Cherie Marshall for joining us today. And if you want to learn more about them, don't forget to check us out at LATV.com. And when we come back, nobody else but Nikki Paris from The Sioux is going to be right here with us. So we're going to start laughing. He's a great comedian. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the Q Agenda. Our next guest is Nikki Paris, one of the hosts from the zoo right here on LA TV. Nikki, welcome. Hi. Welcome. How are you? Good morning, everybody. <laughs> I'm so, Enrique, you look like a sexy librarian this morning. Oh, so start. I mean, stop. Thank you for doing that for us today. <laughs> I know why you complimented him, because before the cameras were rolling, he complimented me, and you said, what about mine? And you were saving it for on air. I actually said it in the dressing room, so this has been brewing. <laughs> exactly. I liked you before, yeah. I like you even more now. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Well, Nikki, welcome. you have so much going on. I'm so excited about everything's happening with your stand. Up. Thank you. Tell me a little bit about, you know, you're working with Terry Hatcher, you're working with the Queer, Queer Eye Boys. Yeah. What? I mean, so I'm on a show called Don't Tell Your Mother. Um, I love that. Nikki. Nikki yes. um, Levy yes, is the producer. Exactly. I That's love right. that show. So it's all about a show of something scandalous that happened to us. Uh -huh. So when I was in high school, I was in Peter Pan. I wasn't Peter because that's to be played by a woman. Uh -huh. And I went to school <laughs> and I cut because I went to the St. Patrick's Day Parade in New York City. And I got in trouble with the school and my mom made me drop out of the play. So how did I get back at her? I came out of the closet. <laughs> what? And oh that, my is god, that, that's insane. Yeah. Is that the story you're telling for yes. the show? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. So that's my story. My mom, my mom is livid. I said, you think you're mad now? I'm gay. Oh. And it was fun. There's not quite vengeance quite I mean, like that to my Catholic it. family. <laughs> you missed it right there. And I'd be like, I would have added on to it. I'd be like, and I'm playing Tinkerbell. Yeah, right. Exactly. I'm going to get into my corset right now. Wait. Just give me two seconds. Oh my gosh. How old were you? I was 15. When you came out? Yeah. And you wanted to be in Peter Pan? Yeah. That's I wanted to be, Peter. To be I, Peter. I was very bitter. I was like, I don't like top hats, but Peter, I'm a team player. Peter Pan sounds like a gay character. Come yeah. On. I mean, hello. The kid that will never grow old, that's every gay man I've right. ever met in my whole right. life. And keep in mind, he wears stockings every time you see him. Thank so. you. Oh, my gosh. So what about Wendy Williams I'm looking at? What is this opportunity yeah. to have with Wendy? Uh, Wendy. That yeah. was my first. How you doing? Okay. That was my first TV show when I was 15 when I first started doing stand-up. So I uh, that's was one that long? Yeah, it was That's one of the comedians on her street talk segment. Wow. And it was when I was in college, so I used to tell my professors, don't expect me today, I'm going to be with my Aunt Wendy. Oh, my God. So, <laughs> what is this accent? Where are you from? I'm from New York. Okay. You can't tell by my high blood pressure. He's a New Yorker. Anxiety. I, yeah. I thought it had more to do with the fact you that you're a host on the zoo. Let's do it. They're let's sexy. have a muffin top no, off. No, no, I'm trying to get... <laughs> me. <laughs> Listen, I give, I give warm let's, hugs. Let's leave some mystery for the viewing audience, okay? They can let's see from here up. <laughs> How are you liking the zoo? I mean, you guys have a... That show is like... Woo. It's the zoo. I love being on the zoo. I just yeah. got neutered. 
So <laughs> it's, it's been so much fun. I mean, there's so much talent and there's so much Latin talent out there and it's really an honor to get to highlight so many special people. So I'm having so much fun. I love the cast. Yeah, and when are you guys on? Feel free to plug it. When yeah. Are you yeah. What, you guys air what, you know, every day, daily from yes. Monday to Thursday, yes, right? Yes, airing right here on LA TV. That's not okay. fair. Oh, daily? Yes. We're only weekly. What is that? <laughs> <laughs> Who do we talk to about because that? we're gay. We're animals. They don't have to pay us as much. <laughs> <laughs> we're hey. just animals, not humans. They just <laughs> but you started. Yes. You started last season. Yeah. And uh, now you're back. I'm back. Yes, back. And it's been such a great experience, and I'm loving it. I love everybody on the show. I love Dennis, who's on my co-host. Yes. You're gonna have on in the next episode. The next, uh, yes, he's yeah. coming to. Coming he's season. coming to the the Q agenda. Yeah. yeah. He dresses agenda a lot better him. than me, so I look like his homeless sister. Uh, I feel so that. That's, Everywhere Something I, I need to work on for the next season. I tell my wardrobe. Well, yeah, that's this New York connection, correct? Yes. 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 Or you guys and we also same, both wear Von what, Dutch. What, wait, Von Dutch, so you're Nikki. Yeah. I'm Paris. Right, of exactly. And we both can't read. What part? And I don't even know what they're talking <laughs> about. What part of New York are you from? Um, I'm from Staten Island, Staten which Island. I'm not bragging about, but it does mean I have mafia connections. That's so true. Don't, don't cut me off in traffic. That's but true. I'm from Staten Island, so unfortunately. Not unfortunately. You don't think? Kind of you go to the beach and step on a <laughs> syringe. <laughs> kind of unfortunately. <laughs> yeah. So do you like New York or LA? Are you, do you weigh into that, that uh, battle, the, the, the coast? I mean, I love them both, but at least in New York, you don't have to hear about crystals as much. Oh, come <laughs> on. Like, What's wrong oh, with crystals? They help please. your energy. Right. Y'all could oh use God. it. I said y'all could use it. I'm going to get up Y'all could use it in New York. No, I'm from Virginia, so I'm neutral. I just really? like starting fights yeah. and watching it happen. I like that about you. <laughs> Yeah, that's really neutral. You're an instigator. I should be closer to New York actually because it's like right there. But did you get your? You obviously got your start doing stand up in New York. Yeah, did yeah, you, yeah. And, and you've been at Caroline's and all the, the yeah. hot spots. Oh my gosh! Tell me about like what you use in your material. Um, it comes a lot from the hole in my heart. That's yeah. where the material yeah, comes that's from. True. But the material just writes itself. Like yeah. I went on a date with a guy last night who, after the date, went to go pick out toilet paper. Wait, together? Yeah. Or like, oh, totally yeah. I yeah. think yeah. toilet paper is important. You know it's, it's a conversation on that a needs first to be date? had. Absolutely. Because if you know that like, you're dating this guy that likes rough toilet paper, you know, I mean, I like it soft. This is never going to work. <laughs> is it cheap or not? Does he, Listen, have, does he like housewares or He goes to pick not? one word to describe this night. I said, crappy. <laughs> At the very end. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Oh, he was like, will I see you again? No. no. You actually said no. No. That's so it sounds like a crappy date. Listen, I'm not yeah. the Charmin bear, all right? Yeah. Yeah. Know who you're going on a date with. All right, well, we want to thank Nikki for stopping yes. by. That's an understatement. Nikki has to come back and join us. Look for him at Nikki Parish Bitch. Thank you for making me curse on television, <laughs> on Instagram, for updates on his new shows, to so keep up with them and learn more about his episodes of The Zoo. Uh, and don't forget to visit the Q Agenda on LATV.com. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.